What's up everyone and welcome to the next long awaited Moonlit Empress video where I'll be showing off for the very first time, unless you've been following me on Twitter, the very first time my newest game in development. And while just scrolling mindlessly through Game Pass one day looking for something new and exciting, I thought I'd wasted all my options when I finally came to just about the very bottom of the list and stumbled on one hidden gem, Xeno Crisis by Bitmap Burial. This is a really cool retro style shoot 'em up that takes the same aesthetics and gameplay structures and design from the old Genesis, NES, 90s uh, era of games, but refreshes it and polishes it with a more modern lens of game design and development, making this awesome product that seems like it could have been built back in the 90s, but having the game feel and polish of a more modern release. It's awesome. And it got me thinking about a lot of cool creative things that I would do in my own version of a twin stick retro style shoot 'em up. Primarily looking at one of my favorite games of 2016, The Game Baker's Fury, I want to incorporate more bullet hell elements as well as making close hand combat just a little bit more of a focus into the game. So with those two things in mind, as well as keeping the budget as small as possible, I got to creating my own twin stick shooter bullet hell. So let's jump in right at the beginning. First things first, we're gonna start a new project. So we'll launch Unreal, and because I'm not baking apple pie here, I'm gonna start with a template. Mm, twin stick suitors are top down, so yeah, top down template sounds good. And I'm gonna name the project something badass, like a uh, twin sticky. Perfect. Wait for it to load and great. The control scheme comes first, so let's just make some edits to the premium character and what the f is this? This is not what I was expecting. Oh, so you click on the screen and the character walks there. Yeah, that's not gonna fly. Um, so let's go back, new project, third person template this time, an even better name, and it's going pretty great so far. At least I'm super familiar with this template. Should be smooth sailing from here. Yes, now this is what I'd like to see. Get that VR stuff out of here. Well, we don't need it. We'll start by adjusting the camera, just the turn sensitivity. Oh yeah, we're cooking with oil now. So what to add next? Let's get a little creative here. Let's see, it's a shooter, so we'll need something for the player to shoot. Now, one thing I don't feel like retro shooters do particularly well is the lack of contrast between projectiles and the background. So it's hard for players to see at a glance what's safe and what's not safe and where they can move. So to start, I'm just gonna make a simple and misfit material so that projectiles will glow and really stand out from all the underlying chaos. Next, we're going to make the projectile itself. Since there are going to be lots of different types of bullets, we're going to set up some different collisions so we can easily turn on and off exactly what we need, depending on the bullet. So when you're controlling a character in a twin stick shooter, you want to be able to move and shoot independently of one another in separate directions. So we'll take one stick's input, and when it's been pushed far enough, we'll start a timer that fires a projectile in every interval. When the player releases the stick, it'll clear the timer and stop firing projectiles. Awesome, halfway there. Now to make the bullets fire in the correct direction, we'll take the player rotation, add it to the vector of the input direction to find a point and a radius around the player. Next, we'll find the rotation between the two points and... Tweak it a bit. And there we go, perfect. I got it on my first try. Finally, we need to add a dodge. With so many projectiles on the screen, the player needs another tool in order to move around them. Making that is pretty simple. We'll take the direction the player is currently moving in and launch them. We'll also make it so they can't take damage during the duration so they have some clean iframes to dodge with. You know, I was thinking it would be cool to add different elevation levels since this is a 3D game, but given when you dash off a ledge, this happens, <laughs> I'm gonna put a pin in that for now. All right, I'm feeling pretty good right now. Let's go ahead and uh, grab some free assets because I'm not making everything original right now. 
Looks like there are two great sci-fi packs on the marketplace for the best price, and I have a female mannequin I'm going to go ahead and import because I want the main character to be a lady. This is my game. She can be a girl if I want her to be. You got a shoes? Make your own. So here we are in my new testing level, and we've got an awesome looking character. So now we need to get to work on the next big important thing. Can you guess what it is? Enemies. We need enemies. So let's set up a base class and we'll make a bullet sponge that has impacts and collisions, as well as a DPS calculator for when we make different weapons. Very cool. Now that all the boring debugging stuff is out of the way, let's start getting funky. I want a basic stationary enemy that fires off projectiles in four different directions. So we'll make a new enemy version of the original projectile class and make it red so that we know it's evil and create another timer event in the enemy class that fires a projectile forward, backward, left, and right on an interval. And nice, baby, we got a game going. Next up, I want to add something a little spicy for the player to have fun with. A nice, big... Sword! <laughs> the stranger has a pretty cool sword, although I don't think it would be very fitting to do sword combat in the same way as Fury. Xeno Crisis had a melee attack which, while helpful in a pinch, I think I want to take something more like that and give it a more central focus. I have this cool sword combat pack that was offered for free a while ago, so I may just shamelessly take some animations I like from it, and yeah, those ones look good. You think I can just use one of the swords too? Nice! This is going to be dope! So I want this sword to be automatically used if the player moves close enough to an enemy. To do that, every time the shoot event is called, we're just going to do a quick line trace to see if there's an enemy in range of the sword. If there isn't, well, we'll shoot the gun like normal. But if there is, we'll start swinging that sword around. Alright, all we need to do now is actually add the sword, the visuals, and of course, make it damage enemies. You know, pretty much the whole mechanic. Focusing on the visuals first, I know I want to add attack trails on the sword that gives it some extra oomph. Thankfully, Unreal has a built-in system called a Nim Notify that creates an event at a specific time, and these animations I'm using already have them in place. Awesome! Now, let me see if I can find some pre-made attack trails since I'm lazy. And bingo! Again, for free! Lit! Now, since I've never actually used a Nim Notify before, it's time for the best part of development. You know what it is. Tutorials. Now, I just placed the sword in the hand and bada bing bada boom, we got a working sword attack. To handle the damage, I add a cone-shaped collision box in front of the box and apply damage to all enemies that overlap it. Oh, and the trail pack had hit effects as well, so I spawned them on top of the enemies. Mm, a chef's kiss. Mwah. Oh, and before I forget, we need to add an enemy that chases the player. We'll just use the move to location node on a timer that updates every half second or so. We'll clean it up later, don't worry. Now to move on to something just a little bit more creative. Power-ups. I've got a nice list here of all the power-ups I want to add, and I think I'm just going to knock them out one by one. They're admittedly a little simpler because I don't want to have to add a new unique mechanic for each one, but I think there's going to be some fun, interesting surprises in there for the players. Welcome, welcome, one and all, to my amazing particle and power-up studio. This space provides a cool-looking environment to build the upgrade particles in. To be honest, this doesn't have any utility and it was probably a waste of time, but it did let me play around with that sci-fi pack a little bit before I tried to build a whole level with it. Anyway, anyway, that's not what's important. Check out these particles! I got a different one for each power-up, which I'll go into soon, I promise, to give them each some identity. A cool trick I used here is actually exclusive in Unreal to the new Niagara Particle Engine. Well, I mean, I'm sure other engines do it, but it's exclusive to Niagara. I broke the particle into its important constituent components and parameterized them so they can be changed in real time. Essentially, what this means is that one single particle system becomes multiple systems with just some different inputs. Which, if you would use Unreal's previous particle editor at Cascade, you know that this is an amazing feature that honestly should have been there from the start. 
So shout out to Epic, using it was a dream. Thank you for finally adding parameters. So here are the actual power-ups. We got the classic spread shot, a laser shot that's pretty standard, just deals extra damage, a minigun, which was super powerful and satisfying. We've got a beam rifle that pierces through enemies and deals damage every tick. And finally, a sword only mode that fires huge projectiles that also pierce. I'm definitely for adding more power-ups. These were just the first ones that came to mind. If you have any ideas, leave them in the comments below. I might just add a version 1.1 with all of those included. So there we go, a nice gameplay prototype. Shooting, dashing, grenades, enemies and power-ups. We have come a long way already, but trust me, trust me, we've got a long way to go. So catch me next week as we actually start building out some levels. If you'd like to receive a notification when I post and you've enjoyed the content, consider liking and subscribing. Bye.